discuss micro questions. A 15 month old boy is brought to the clinic for evaluation of a rash. And the rash as shown in the image started on the face and spread to the trunk. He also had fever and cough. Past two days, no vaccination records available. The physical examination reveals a macular papular rash of the face, trunk and proximal limbs with no lymphadenopathy. Blue white spots are seen in the oral mucosa. Ladu question. Bilateral mild conjunctival infection injection. The cause agent of this condition belongs to which of the following virus families? See here. We have the old criteria for measles. It's a case of measles because of coplic spot. Number one, coplic spot. Number two, no lymphadenopathy because lymphadenopathy associated with rubella. An important thing, the rash appears on the behind the ears and it's a macular papular rash. Second important thing. Third, the case definition criteria. Previously it was CCC, cough, Corazon conjunctivitis, but the new one, recently the government changed the case definition criteria for measles, is just fever and rash. Any child comes with fever and rash, you need to think of measles, that's a case definition criteria. So, coplic spot, macular papular rash and uh, uh, Fever with rash, no lymphadenopathy, all suggestive and starts at uh, ear and face and trunk, all suggestive of measles. Measles virus comes under which category? It is a paramyxoviridae. So, all paramyxovirus are single standard RNA. Wherever single stranded RNA is there, I will remove this. Because double stranded RNA is real but it is not non enveloped. So, single stranded two things are there. Number two, it is negative sense. And what about the envelope? All the RNA viruses are enveloped except few non-enveloped RNA viruses picornaviridae if I have the mnemonic calci rio astro and picorno crap please remember when you think of P if you think paramyxo total answer will be wrong so mnemonic should be used in a proper way it's a paramyxo viridae. It is enveloped virus. Single standard enveloped virus because of the measles virus. Single standard RNA enveloped negative sense virus. Negative sense virus. What about the symmetry? Helical symmetry. Helical symmetry. Vaccine strain, Edmondson, Zagreb strain. You need to know all other points also. Next is, image shown here is a vaccine for COVID-19. This vaccine belongs to. Corbivax. Recently introduced vaccine for COVID-19. There are four types of vaccines, viral vaccines available for COVID-19. All four are available in India. Uh, wholesale inactivated vaccine whole virus is covaxin you can give 0 on 4 weeks RNA vaccine is Moderna this also 0 on 4 weeks First DNA vaccine and second indigenous vaccine from India is Psychody plasmid based three doses 0, 
28-56 days uh, 0, 4 and 8 weeks and subunit vaccine recently government of India permitted two subunit vaccine one is Covavax another one is Corbivax Corbivax is a subunit vaccine we are using spike protein receptor binding domain which shortly called RBD receptor binding domain or be it receptor binding domain we are using as an antigen subunit spike protein This also the vaccine schedule is 0 and 4 weeks. Zero and 4 weeks. It's a subunit vaccine. So all four types of vaccines are available. It is very recently approved by uh, government of India. One is Corbivax, another one is Covavax. Covavax is it also subunit vaccine uh, spike protein. But the schedule is 0 3 weeks. This is 0 and 4 weeks. Next is Yeah. A five year old boy is evaluated for recurrent infections and failure to thrive. He has an he has been hospitalized for pneumococcal pneumonia twice and has had four episodes of otitis media. So recurrent pyogenic infections, recurrent bacterial infections. The patient also has history of prolonged diarrhea caused by cryptosporidium parvum, immunocompromised. Physical examination shows large tonsil, palpable lymph nodes and hepatosplenia megaly. Further evaluation pathogenesis is shown in the image which of the following immunoglobin likely has the highest serum concentration in this patient. See the image. This is the helper cell, CD4 cell. This is B cell. These two people will interact with this thing because T helper cell has CD4 ligand and B cells have CD40, they will interact. Then only the T helper cell produces interleukins, interleukin 4, interleukin 5, 6. These are all involved in a process called Class switching. Class switching means the IgM become IgG, IgE, IgA. Usually E is by the interleukin 4, usually. interleukin 5, interleukin 6, they involved usually. So once this is stopped, there is a problem in CD40, ligand and CD40, there won't be any communication between uh, T cell and B cell. So what happened? The class switching will be stopped. So the IgM will be increased. IgM will be increased, all other will be not class switched. This is called hyper IgM syndrome. We call it as hyper IgM syndrome. IgM is the first immunoglobin produced, but it is not very specific as comparing with IgG or IgA. And we need secondary immune response. Memory is needed. The major defense mechanism is secondary immune response because massive production of antibodies will happen in that stage. That may not happen. There is no class switching. So in this condition, highest number, more amount of IgM will be there because there is no class switching. This is called hyper IgM syndrome. Next is
A 60 year old man comes to the physician due to right calf pain, redness, and swelling in his swelling. He is diagnosed with cellulitis. He started clindamycin. That's a clue. Few days later, after starting treatment, he develops watery diarrhea, abdomen cramps. The patient is hospitalized, and complete blood count shows leukocytosis. Toxin most likely responsible for his current condition. Primary damages. Which of the following components of the intestinal mucosal cells? So. Number one, he started with clindamycin, and he came with diarrhea. So clindamycin is the very notorious drug which causes, yeah, Clostridium difficile infection. Clindamycin usage leads to Clostridium difficile infection. We call it as pseudomembranous. Necrotizing enterocolitis. We call it as antibiotic associated pseudomembranous enterocolitis. It is caused by Clostridium difficile. It is caused by Clostridium difficile. There are two anti toxins are there. It produces toxin A, act as a enterotoxin, toxin B, act as a cytotoxin, toxin A and toxin B, they produce pseudo membrane. And what is the question? What is the mechanism of action of the toxin? The toxin B is a cytotoxin. It act on damage the cytoskeleton integrity. Damage the cytoskeleton integrity of the cell. That's the important function of a cytotoxin. And usually, current treatment is uh, vancomycin. Sometimes they may ask about the culture medium, cycloserin, cefaxitin, fructosagar. Cycloserin, cefaxitin, fructosagar is the selective medium we are using. Cycloserin, cefaxitin, fructosagar. It's a case of clear cut case of uh, clostridium difficile infection. It's otherwise called healthcare associated diarrhea. Next is. A 30 year old male present to the emergency room complaining of fever, malaise, and typical rash as shown in the image that includes the palms and soles. Rash in the palms and soles. When the patient's serum is added, mixture of cardiolipin, lecithin, and cholesterol, extensive flocculation is absorbed. Indirectly, they gave the clue. Serum with cardiolipin, lecithin, and cholesterol, what is it called? This test is called VD oral test. VD oral test. So the antibody produced against Trypanoma pallidum cross reacts with it cross reacts with cardiolipin and lecithin. So these are all fatty items. So after precipitation after the antigen antibody binding, they will not settle down because of their lipid content, they float in the solution. So it causes flocculation. Flocculation. So this indicates he may have syphilis, especially this kind of rash commonly seen in secondary syphilis. But this is not sufficient. VDR test is a screening test, non specific test. That's the point. VDR RPR, these are all non specific tests. So once VDR test is positive or reactive, then it needs to be confirmed with specific test.
like trypanoma pallidum, particulate agglutination test, TPHA, trypanoma pallidum immobilization test, fluorescent trypanomal antibody absorption test, those kind of tests. It need to be confirmed with specific test. So, here, what is the next step of management before starting the treatment? We need to confirm with spirochet antibodies, that means specific test. Using specific test for detect spirochet antigens to detect spirochetal antibodies. No use of fungal antibodies. Cold agglutin for mycoplasma like rheumatoid factor may not be present like this. No need to do fungal antibodies. It's a clear cut case of syphilis because it's already positive for VDRL test. Already is positive for screening test. We'll go to the particular direction. Next is eight year old male is brought to the emergency room with two day uh, history of fever, abdomen pain and diarrhea. Careful history taking reveals that the patient's pet puppy had diarrhea one week ago. So that may think it may be zoonotic. Aside from the present episode, the patient has no significant past medical history and all his vaccinations are up to date. He is too negative for bovine one parasite, rule load parasitology. What is the most likely cause? So, abdomen pain and diarrhea and pet puppy, puppy had diarrhea. So, which is zoonotic? Shijala is an exclusive human pathogen. We need to deal like that. Human pathogen. And based on the series associated with consumption of uh, Chinese fried rice. And the important manifestation is vomiting, okay, emetic type, then followed by diarrheal type, all within two days. Vibria parahemolyticus associated with seafood. Seafood poisoning, Vibrio parahemolyticus associated with seafood poisoning, especially shellfish. So, the zoonotic disease is Campylobacter. Campylobacter is zoonotic disease, it causes diarrhea and it is one of the most common cause of uh, gastroenteritis among uh, developed countries most common cause of gastroenteritis in developed countries. Developed countries. It's a Campylobacter jejuni, gulving ship bacteria and it may cause a complication called GBS, Gulenbar syndrome, Gulenbar syndrome. Next is a 36 year old immigrant from Peru present to clinic because of difficulty in swallowing liquids. He says that also difficulty in benching. Physical examination is unremarkable. Barium solo shoal dilated esophagus. That's a point. Manometer confirms the advent of peristalsis in the smooth muscle portion of the esophagus. The symptoms are caused by an infection. Which of the following organism most likely cause? He is having mega esophagus. Mega esophagus. It's a classical picture of Saugas disease. Mega esophagus. It's a classical picture of Saugas disease. Saugas disease, the features are mega colon, mega esophagus. Mega cardia and mega ureter. So these are all the classical picture of Chagas disease as well as Romana sign. As well as Romana sign, it is caused by Trypanosoma cruzi. It is caused by Trypanosoma cruzi. The vector is red with bug.
mode of transmission stercorian and toxoplasma gondii it produces cyst bradycyst in the in the tissues in the tissue cyst pseudocyst isospora belli it produces diarrhea usually maximum the complication is cholecystitis and brucella melitensis is a zoonotic disease here the features are fever uh, hepatomegaly hepatosplenomegaly uh, fatigue vertebral osteomyelitis those are all the features so the answer here is trypanosoma cruzi because he is having mega esophagus which is the classical picture of trypanosoma cruzi it causes uh, american sleeping sickness american sleeping sickness next is a 35 year old immigrant plhiv complaints of intermittent abdomen cramps he has has multiple respiratory infection for last two years as well as persistent chronic cough labor results are follows complete blood count hemoglobin okay leukocytes neutrophils eosinophil eosinophil i that mean some parasitic infection will be there lymphocytes monocytes four which are the following finding in this patient would most suggest of strongly stercolis infection so plhiv one of the common parasitic infection is strongly stercolis it's intestinal nematode peri anal egg deposition commonly seen in intrabius vermicularis you can get plano convexite it may lead to auto infection proglottids in the stool seen in uh, cystoid infection like uh, tinea solium tinea saginata diphyllobothrium light trophocyte and cystin stool is the classical picture of uh, entamoeba histolytica giardia and balantidium coli and this stromlide stercorelis they lay the egg in the intestine the intestine the egg will break immediately it become rhabdiform larva and man excretes rhabdiform larva in the stool because we call it as ovo viviparous we call this ovo viviparous what is ovo viviparous the egg immediately become larva nobody can see the egg because egg is in the intestine egg will hatch into rabbit form larva immediately and man excretes the rabbit form larva so that is the diagnostic stage of strong lead stercorelis as well as the infective stages pilari form larva infective stages pilari form larva next is a 31 year old man comes to the office due to oral lesion that cause occasional discomfort during eating he also reports fatigue and in unintentional weight loss the patient has no prior medical problems and takes no medications the lesions can be easily scraped off revealing erythematous mucosa underneath there are several enlarged cervical axial lymph nodes microscopy of scraping shown in the image which of the uh, following diagnostic test is most appropriate evaluation of the patient so he is having oral lesions unintentional weight loss all suggestive of lymphadenopathy all suggestive of some immunocompromised condition and see beautifully we have the picture east pseudo hyphae chlamydospores this is pseudo hyphae Chlamydospores. Pseudo hyphae with chlamydospore, 
suggestive of invasive candidiasis. The common culprit involved in this invasive candidiasis is candida albicans. Candida albicans. Invasive candidiasis. It produces pseudohyphae. And one more test is called germ tube test positive. The germ tube test is positive. So, it commonly seen in immunocompromised, especially where is the defect in cell mediated immunity we can have this finding and the oral thrush or esophageal candidiasis or uh, uh, esophageal candidiasis is an AIDS defining illness AIDS defining illness so the next level of management we need to go for HIV detection we need to do HIV antigen antibody detection because to rule out the cause of cell mediated immunity there is no chance for malignancy PCR for Coxsackie virus, no, because they produce hepangina, uh, Bonham disease, those kind of conditions. Multinucleated giant cells, in case of oral hairy leukoplakia, we can think. Not possible. Okay, right. Next is gram negative diplococci were demonstrated in a gram strain of urethral discharge urethral drainage an 18 year old male who presented symptoms of urethritis so gram negative diplococci urethral discharge first line itself you come to conclusion it may be gonococcal urethritis gonococcal urethritis symptoms of urethritis good continuous passage of the strain in laboratory medium resulted reversion of fimbriated to non fimbrial strain always when you do keep on subculture they lost many of the property for example, the fimbriae become non-fimbrial strain, sometimes capsulated, become non-capsulated, many changes. Sometimes the virulent become non-virulent, revirulent. That is the mechanism we are using for uh, making BCG vaccine. Mycobacterium bovis will keep on doing subculture, lost the virulence but kept the immunogenicity like that here what happens here what happens the fimbria lost the fimbria lost once the fimbria lost what will happen what is the function of fimbria the main function of fimbria is attachment with cell surfaces Attachment with cell surfaces. Attachment with cell surfaces. Okay, so bacteria attach with our cell surface with the help of the fimbria. And once the fimbria are gone, there is there is no attachment. If there is no attachment, there is no colonization. If there is no colonization, there is no infection. Got it? And the important virulent factor of gonococci is T1 and T2 pili. Pili is nothing but a specialized form of fimbri, T2 pili. Once it becomes non fimbriated, there won't be any chance for attachment. Okay? So basically, it is not capsulated. It won't lose the serological specificity when there is a problem in O antigen, that time the possibility will be there. It won't die because of loss of fimbria. And important, it lost the capacity of colonizing. So, a fimbriated become non fimbriated may lead to inability to colonize the mucosal epithelium. Hope you all enjoyed the questions. Thank you.